Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy have just entered a spaceship in Neptune City spaceport in search of a traitor against the United Planets. They pause in the open hatch a moment. He may be up forward, tampering with the controls. Wrong guess, gentlemen. Commander, look out! Stay where you are, cadet. Oh, yeah? Cardo, put down that gun. Don't try to get to your feet, Commander. You'll get what the cadet got. What are you doing in this ship? Preparing it for its last voyage. There's an explosive hidden aboard, time to go off two hours after blastoff. And you, my friends, will be aboard. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The Queen of Space. <laughs> Gang, this is Space Patroller Dick Tufeld at an aqua jet boat race on Mars. Now, my favorite is the shooting star. But hey, it doesn't have a chance. That driver's filling up the tank with ordinary fuel. You see what I mean? No zip, no zoom. Hey, but wait. The driver's now putting in some super fuel. Wow, look at the shooting star go. Bound to be a winner now because she's supercharged. Supercharged with super fuel. Now, you want to be a winner too, don't you, gang? You bet. In sports, in school, in everything you do. Well, then remember the story of the shooting star. Ordinary fuel, ordinary start. Super fuel, super start. So don't wait. Get supercharged. And gang, get supercharged the way Buzz Corey does. Eat a good breakfast with a checkerboard super cereal, like rice checks or wheat checks. Some cereals, yes, sir. If you want flavor, just get checks. If you want something different, just get checks. C H E X, checks. Right for a bite because they're bite sized. Get them at your grocer's today in the red and white checkerboard package. Rice checks, wheat checks, the bite sized super cereals that help to supercharge you. <laughs> Commander Corey, Cadet Happy, and Tonga, Assistant Security Chief of the United Planets are on the planet Uranus to investigate a series of accidents that have occurred to passenger ships. In the chart room of the Space Patrol office, Buzz is briefing Happy and Tonga. You two have made a lot of flights between the outer planets, so I don't have to impress on you the tremendous distances involved. No, sir. And you know that here in Uranus, we're outside the orbits of seven of the ten planets of the solar system. And yet we're barely halfway between the Sun and Pluto. That's right. Now, everyone realizes that the companies running freight and passenger ships between Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are working under handicaps. Yeah, the long hauls cut down on their profits. Right. A freighter could make 16 trips from Earth to Mercury, for example, while other freighters make only one trip from Neptune to Pluto. But that doesn't explain all these accidents on the outer planet runs. No, it doesn't, Tonga, at least not entirely. Unless, unless the companies are cutting down on safety checkups to save money. Robbie and I thought that was the explanation at first. However, it's a pretty short-sighted company that would cut corners on inspections, especially when it keeps losing ships like Spaceways Incorporated. Now, one good thing, no passengers have been lost. No, not yet. It's our job to find out what the trouble is before any human lives are sacrificed. Well, from the report Spaceways Incorporated, it had most of the accidents. Yes. Of course, they are a new concern. They haven't had the experience that trans-orbit lines have had. Commander, isn't trans-orbit operated by a woman? Yes. And she's a very capable manager, according to all reports. Her name is... Jelna Fenton. Well, I, I thought Transorbit just handled the uh, inner planet surface. Yeah, they did until recently. But now they have half a dozen ships on the runs between Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Have they been having trouble, too? A yeah, little, but not nearly so much as spaceways. Now, our regular space patrol inspectors haven't been able to find the source of the difficulty. So we're going to do a little undercover work. That's where you come in, Tonga. Yes, Commander. You'll pose as a writer for a magazine, gathering material for a series of articles on living conditions on the outer planets. Good. Then I can make trips from planet to planet without arousing suspicion. Yes, it'll give you a chance to observe conditions around spaceports and watch the personnel. What do you and I do, Commander? Well, for the time being, we'll just make routine inspections of space patrol bases and keep in touch with Tonga. How do you want me to contact you, Commander? Use your miniature spacophone. Keep it with you at all times. I will. And don't use it when there's anyone around. When do I start? Immediately. There's a spaceways passenger ship leaving Uranus for Pluto in the morning. Be aboard it. 
Right, Commander. Happy now, blast off and terror the fifth a few hours after your ship leaves. I got your message, gentlemen. What's up? You can cancel that trip to Mercury, Cardo. You're staying here on Neptune. What about that spaceway ship I was supposed to, um... Fix. I've already arranged it. Oh, what happens this time? Does the oxygen reclaiming unit give out? No, we won't use that one again for a while. I've got a better one. Yeah? What? The orbit computer. It's been tampered with, so it'll give the wrong vector. Oh, that's not so serious. Oh, isn't it? On a run to Pluto with a full passenger list? You know how little reserve power those spaceway ships have. Hey, that's right. They'll run out before they can get back on course. Unless they get a spaceophone fix from space control. They won't be able to. Halfway to Pluto, their spaceophone power unit will fail. <laughs> a few more accidents like this and nobody will get aboard a spaceway ship. Which means that trans-orbit will have all the business. I've sure got to hand it to you, gentlemen. At first, I thought you were crazy to take on these outer planet runs. I mean, it would have been crazy if we were merely going to be satisfied with a few crumbs that spaceways didn't want to be bothered with. If you keep on, Jelda, you'll be known as the Queen of Space. Queen of space. You know, Cardo, I think I rather like. We're on vector, sir. Yes. You know, that's the fourth time you've checked in the last half hour. We're on automatic control. Oh, gee, sir, a guy has to do something to keep busy. We're still 10 million DUs from Pluto, and I've read every tech manual in the ship. Imagine having to make this run every day, Happy, on a freighter. Oh, no, thanks. I'd go crazy. Mm -hmm. Tonga calling Commander Corey. Tonga calling Commander Corey. Maybe she's getting bored, too. <laughs> Corey here. Go ahead, Tonga. Commander, something's wrong aboard this passenger ship. Well, what's the trouble? Where are you? I'm in my private compartment. I think the ship is off course. Happy, get a fix on Tonga's signal. Yes, sir. What makes you think you're off course, Tonga? I overheard a couple of the crew members whispering. They don't want to alarm the passengers, but I know the steward is very worried. Well, how could the ship get off course? Oh, I don't know, but I heard the steward say that the ship's space phone is out of commission. Does anyone aboard know you've got a miniature space phone? No, Commander. I've got a fixer. They sure are off course by nearly 30 degrees. Did you hear that, Tonga? Yes. And they must have been off for some time. There are thousands of DUs from the regular space lane. Now, Tonga, listen. I could space phone the correct course to you to give to the pilot, but that would mean somebody would know you're a space patrol agent. Of course, if the ship is really in trouble... Oh, I don't think so. At least not yet. Well, then Happy and I'll change vector and come close enough so that the pilot will pick us up in his viewscope. He'll naturally follow us. And you'll lead the ship to Pluto. Oh, just a minute. Got the position charted, Happy? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, they're about here. Mm -hmm. Tonga, you're much closer to Neptune than to Pluto. These outer planet ship line operations don't have too much reserve power. We'll lead you back to Neptune. All right, Commander. We're changing vector now. We should be in view scope range in about half an hour. You go out and mingle with the passengers. Contact me if any serious trouble develops. Right, Commander. Corey out. Well, Happy, what was it you were saying about this Pluto run being boring? Here's that schedule of Spaceways flights, Jelna. Most of them are inward bound from Pluto. Mm -hmm. Spaceways Common is due this afternoon at Neptune City Spaceport. Leaves for Neptune's moon tomorrow morning. That doesn't give us much time. True, but it might give us a fine opportunity. How do you mean? With well, a short haul to the moon coming up tomorrow, chances are the maintenance crew won't do much work on the ship. Yeah, that's right. They'll wait till he gets back, unless there's something that needs immediate attention. All right, Cardo. Keep an eye on the comet when it comes in. After that long run from Pluto, the pilot and the rest of the crew will probably head for town for a good time. Yeah, you're right, gentlemen. Say, I wonder how that other ship's making out, the big passenger job. Right now, the pilot's probably discovering he's millions of DUs off course, and with a low power supply. But don't start making any inquiries, Carter. Don't worry. I'll wait for the official announcement. Another Spaceways ship lost. Think they see us, sir? They ought to. They show up strong enough in our view, Scott. Well, I hope the pilot has sense enough to follow us. He'll probably be very glad to, Happy. I want to change vector now. Watch the screen and see if he follows us. Yes, sir. How about it, Happy? I think he's got the idea all right, sir. Tonga calling Commander Corey. Corey here. Go ahead, Tonga. I'm back in my compartment. Everything's all right. Good. Does the pilot know we're headed for Neptune? He just made an announcement through the public address system. We passengers have been told that the ship is making an emergency landing in Neptune. There's no panic, I hope. No, we've been assured that it's nothing serious. There's a lot of grumbling about the delay, but nobody's alarmed. Well, find out all you can, Tonga. I'll arrange to meet you when you land on Neptune.
Jelma, something went wrong. What do you mean? That ship that was supposed to get lost in the run to Pluto. Well, what about it? Just landed here on Neptune, of all the rotten breaks. But the orbit computer did fail, didn't it? Yes, but a space patrol ship happened along, and the pilot followed him to Neptune. Did you say happened along? Yes. Apparently, the space patrol ship didn't even know the passenger ship was in trouble. At least the space patrol didn't attempt to make contact. Well, maybe it's better this way. Now we've got 35 or 40 unhappy passengers. We'll tell their friends what an inefficient line Spaceways is. Next time, they'll all take transorbit. One thing I admire about you, Jelna, you always look on the bright side of things. How about the comet? It's working out the way you said it would. The crew headed for town for a good time, and the ship is due for an overhaul after it gets back from Neptune's moon. But it won't get back, Cargo. It's going to be blown up on the way. Blown up? Yes. You can sneak aboard tonight and plant an explosive in one of the aft compartments. I suggest the emergency rations compartment. Suppose they check the ship before blast-off. It isn't likely they'd check the emergency rations before a short trip to that moon. Especially when there's a major overhaul coming up in a couple of days. I've got it all worked out. The explosive will be in a regular emergency ration. I've looked all over the spaceport, Commander, and I can't find Tonga. I wonder what's delaying her. She's had plenty of time to check in at the space hotel and get back here. Shall I look again, sir? And maybe she's over in wing B. Oh, here she comes, Happy. There, she sees us. Let's move over here behind these pillars. Remember, Hap, don't call her by name. Commander. What did you find out? The orbit computer and the ship had been tampered with. So had the space phone transmitter. So somebody wanted that ship to get lost. Yes. And I picked up a very interesting rumor about who might be behind it. Who? I've been talking to some of the Spaceways employees. They think Transorbit is trying to run them out of business. That's a serious charge. Do they have any evidence? No, but I heard a certain name mentioned. Uh, Brox Cardo. Brox Cardo, huh? Yes. Cardo works for John Fenton of Transorbit. And what's Cardo supposed to do? I couldn't learn anything specific, but... I get the impression that Carter would do just about anything. Transorbit's main offices are here in Neptune City. Happy, maybe you and I can check up on this Cardo. Yes, sir. And Tonga, the best thing for you to do is go ahead with our original plan. You mean go on to Pluto? Yes. When is the next passenger ship leaving for Pluto? Spaceways hasn't any scheduled until day after tomorrow. But there is a transorbit ship leaving tomorrow morning. And take that one. Oh, and by the way, this might be a good time to start gathering material for those magazine articles you're supposed to be writing. Oh? See if you can get an interview with Jelna Fenton at Transorbit. All right, Commander. In the meantime, Happy and I'll check up on Brock's cargo. Slow down a little, Happy. We don't want Cardo to suspect we're trailing him. Yes, sir. He's heading for that spaceship. That's the comet. Just got in from Pluto this afternoon. See, it's a beautiful ship, isn't it, sir? Yes, it's the pride of spaceways. Hold it, Happy. Cardo's getting in the ship. Yes. I'm very curious to know why a Transorbit employee is snooping around a Spaceways ship. What do you suppose he's got in that box he's carrying? Suppose we find out. Come on, Happy. He's been in there a long time. Up the ladder, Happy. Let's find out just what he's up to in there. Which way, sir? Look up forward. He may be tampering with the controls. Wrong guess, gentlemen. Commander, look out! Stay where you are, cadet. Oh, yeah? Cardo, put down that gun. Now, try to get to your feet, Commander. You'll get what the cadet got. What are you doing in this ship? Preparing the comet for its last voyage. What do you mean? There's an explosive hidden in the aft compartment. Time to go off two hours after blast-off tomorrow. But there'll be passengers aboard. Yes, I know. It looks like there'll be two extra passengers, Commander. The cadet... And you. We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. Gang, this is Space Patroller Dick Tufel speaking from the Interplanetary School Stadium on Terra. Just saw a swell football game here. Listen to this crowd cheering the winners. Yes, it sure is fun when you're a winner and hear something like that. Right, gang? But remember, to be a winner, you have to be supercharged. And here's the way to take care of that. Eat a good breakfast with Rice Chex or Wheat Chex, the bite-sized super cereals that help to supercharge you. Delicious? Why, there's sure plenty of zing in that Rice Chex flavor. And man, oh man, Rice Chex biscuits are toasted and toasted to make them crisper and crisper. And Wheat Chex, 
Ah, there's a flavor you'd fly to the moon for. Now remember, it's fun to be a winner and hear this. So move right up and be a winner. Move right up to the table for a breakfast that supercharges you. A good breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks. Get them today, gang, and get supercharged. <laughs> At the Neptune City spaceport, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy entered a spaceship to apprehend a suspected saboteur. The saboteur, Brox Cardo, attacking Buzz and Happy by surprise, put them to sleep with a ray gun. Now heavily bound and gagged, they're locked in a compartment in the spaceship in which Cardo was planted an explosive, time to go off two hours after the ship blasts off for Neptune's moon. Meanwhile, following Buzz's instructions... Tonga has called on Jelna Fenton, head of the Transorbit Space Lines, in her office on Neptune City. To obtain information, Tonga is posing as a writer for the Inner Planets Weekly Magazine. You have given me some very interesting facts, Miss Fenton. I won't take up any more of it. Jelna, I... Oh, excuse me. Oh, it's quite all right. I, I was just leaving. This young lady is writing an article about us for the Inner Planets Weekly. Well, that's, uh, that's fine. Thank you again, Miss Fenton. Goodbye. Goodbye. And I think you're very wise to take a transorbit ship to Pluto. Thank you. That girl's not much of a space traveler. She was on the ship that got lost, frightened her to death. That's all? Now I am glad that ship got here safely. She'll write up her horrible experience on a spaceway ship and give transorbit a nice plug. Yeah, swell. Now, what I wanted to... And I managed to work in that line of yours. You know, calling me the queen of space. Oh, of course, I did it very modestly. Sure, Jolly. But listen... I planted the explosive in the comet, all right. Oh, good. Did anyone see you? Yes. Commander Corey of the Space Patrol. What? Now, don't worry. I took care of him and his cadet both. They're locked up on the ship. When the ship blows up tomorrow, they'll Wait. be... Wait. Thought so. She was listening. Who? That girl, the reporter. Oh, do you think she heard us? We've got to find out. Come on, Cardo. We'll follow her and see where she goes. Only get my hands free. We've got to get loose, Happy. There's a bomb aboard this ship. Carter set it to go off, and the ship's about halfway to Neptune's moon. There. I'll untie your hands. Thank you, sir. I don't know how we're going to get out of this compartment, but we've got to. Well, when somebody comes aboard, maybe they can hear us pounding on the door. Possibly. This ship is heavily soundproof. Can't even hear the roar of the rockets when... I wonder. You mean maybe we've already blasted off? That could be. Listen... No. I don't hear anything. There's no telling how long that ray gun put us to sleep. If we're in flight now, that bomb may go off any second. Look, let's try banging on the door. All right, Hey, open up. Open up. Anybody out there? Open up. Oh, wait a minute. Do you hear anything? Yes. Hey, somebody's heard us. Hey, Tonga! Commander. Happy, are you all right? Yes, Tonga, but how did you know we were here? I overheard Carter tell John. Oh, so we haven't blasted off. Obviously not. Now we've got to find that bomb and get it out of the ship. Yes, sir. Commander, I think Carter and Jelna are after me. They may think so, Tonga, but as a matter of fact, we're after them. As soon as we fix that bomb, we'll be on our way. Let's get at it, Happy. I can carry the bomb, sir. It's not heavy, huh? Are you sure that's the right box? Yes, Tonga. It was the only one that was hidden in the emergency ration storage compartment. Yeah, you can tell by the weight. This box is twice as heavy as the others. Happy, you and I'll take this bomb to the Space Patrol emergency officer here at the spaceport for detonating. And we'll all meet later at gate 7. Yes, sir. Tonga, while we're doing that, you call Neptune Unit Space Patrol headquarters and alert them to pick up Cardo and gel the fence. Look, there they are. We're too late, Jella. That girl set them loose. Why didn't you give the commander and that cadet another blast with a ray gun? It would have kept them unconscious till after the comet blasted off. Well, what difference does it make now? The girl found them. It makes a lot of difference. The commander won't lose any time in getting out an alarm for us. Uh, what do we do? Well, let's get to our ship and blast off. We've got to get off Neptune. Yeah, we've got to get off Neptune before Corey has a chance to alert the space patrol. Oh, wait. The girl's leaving and coming this way. Get out of sight before she sees us. I'd like to really fix her. Never mind the girl. Wait a minute. It might be a good idea to take her with us. What for? Don't be an idiot. You've got that ray gun, haven't you? Yeah. Then get her. With all these people around? Come on. If we handle it right, nobody will notice. Just have that gun ready. Now, Cardo. In a hurry, miss? Oh, why, Miss Fenton. 
What a nice surprise. You're not half as surprised as you're going to be. This is a ray gun on your back. Now come along quietly. Get moving out toward the ships. Tonga's not at Gate 7, Commander. I know. And she won't be. What? She never did call headquarters. I just checked. Tonga's not in the habit of disobeying orders. But, but what happened? John Fenton's own private space cruiser just blasted off. I got the report from space control. Well, sir, do you think she has Tonga with her? That's what I'm afraid of, Happy. Get to our ship. We're going after them. I've got the ship on vector for Saturn, gentlemen. Put it in full acceleration. We've got to get plenty of distance between us and Neptune. Yeah. How's the girl? Still locked up in the compartment. Oh, I found out who she is. Yeah? Who? Tonga, assistant security chief of the space patrol. Oh, that's not good. Why? This could be plenty of trouble. Oh, and I suppose you don't think we're in trouble now? Tonga can help keep Corey off our necks. Yeah, but will she? Save her own, sure. Besides, we don't care whether she cooperates or not. Jelma, look, the rear view scope. Ship. It's coming right toward us and gaining every second. Jelma, they're after us. Now, don't get excited. Calm down. That's a space patrol ship. It's Corey. So much the better. Relax, Cardo. Relax. It's a private cruiser, sir. Yes, with a transorbit trademark on it. John the Fenton's ship, all right. And we're sure gaining on it. They must know they're being followed. They don't seem to be doing anything about it. Turn on the space phone, Happy. Yes, sir. This is Commander Corey aboard Terra 5 calling John Fenton and private cruiser N-56. Corey to John Fenton. Cruiser N-56 to Terra 5. Go ahead. Return to Neptune immediately. You're under arrest. Really, Commander? Is Brox Cardo aboard? Brox Cardo? I never heard of him. This is an order, Miss Fenton. Return to Neptune immediately, or we'll have to use force. It's very interesting, Commander, but I don't think you will. You wouldn't want to risk harming your assistant security chief, would you? So you have Tonga aboard. That's right, Commander. I suppose you think I'm bluffing. No, Jawa. I believe you. I'm warning you, if you harm Tonga in if any way... If you don't want her harm, then I suggest you just go about your own business and leave us alone. Goodbye, Commander. Jawa, Listen. Tonga calling Commander Corey. Hey, Tonga's still got her miniature space phone, and she's on her private frequency. Go ahead, Tonga. Commander, I'm aboard Jelna Fenton's private cruiser. I know. Abby and I are right behind you. I just talked to Jelna, and she refused to return to Neptune. I've tried to get out of the compartment, but, but I can't. It's locked. Well, listen, Tonga. Right now, Jelna has the upper hand. If we join airlocks with her ship, she'll carry out her threat to harm you. Well, she'll have to land sometime. Yes, but that still doesn't help your case. Where is your compartment? Amidships, on the starboard side. I'm going to try something, Tonga. Maybe a little risky, but in the long run, you'll stand a better chance of getting away. Anything you say, Commander. Whatever you do, don't let Jelna know I've talked to you by miniature space of phone. Yes, sir. Obey their orders exactly. Corey, out. Happy while I put on my space suit. Get me an atomic torch. Atomic torch, yes, sir. Hurry. I'll pull up close to Jelna's ship. ship's right off our starboard. Now, I guess he doesn't believe we've got Tonga aboard. But if he starts anything, he'll find out soon enough. Corey to Jelna. Corey to Jelna. Going to talk to him? Yes. What is it, Commander? I want to be sure Tonga's aboard. Don't you trust me? I want to see that she's all right. Now, that's fair enough. Cardo, go bring Tonga up here so the Commander can see her. Okay. Keep pulling in closer to Jelna's ship, Happy. We're nearly touching now, sir. I'm going to keep back so they can't see that I've got a spacesuit on. You know what to do. Yes, sir. As soon as you tell Jelna that you see Tonga, I let our ship drop back a little, and you go out the airlock and jetpack over to Jelna's ship. That's right. Turn on the space phone, Happy. Well, Jelna, have you got Tonga? Let's see her. Uh, yes, Commander. She's right here at the nose port. Don't you see her? Yes. Are you all right, Tonga? Yes, Commander. Now, are you satisfied, Commander? Just see that you don't harm her. Then get your ship away from here. Cut it, Happy. Okay, sir. All right. Drop back now. I'm going out the airlock. Be careful, sir. Uh, Corey's pulled his ship away. Good. He finally got some sense. I was afraid for a while he was going to connect airlocks. Would have been just too bad for Tonga if he had. I'll take her back and lock her up again. All right. Never mind. I'll take care of Corey! her. Corey! Commander! Don't reach for that gun, Cardo! Cardo! Then 
Send me your arm, Miss Benson. Let go of me, Connor. Let go. Then stop struggling. Drop it, Cardo. Oh. All right, you ask for it. Now, just stay down there. How did you get aboard, Corey? Doesn't the spacesuit give you a hint? I came in through the airlock. I triggered the latch with an atomic cutting torch. Tonga, you can let go of Miss Fenton now. I've got her covered. Yes, Commander. We'll lock them up after I contact Happy. Commander Corey calling Cadet Happy. You made it, sir. Right, Happy. Tonga and I have got Cardo and Miss Fenton. She seems pretty unhappy. I suppose she's disappointed because there won't be an article about her in the Inner Planet Weekly. Uh, well, tell her to cheer up, sir. There'll be a nice long one about her in the next Space Patrol crime report. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be back with an action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story in just a moment. Say, do you hear that clock? Time's running away fast, gang, but it's something you just can't hold back. So don't wait. Send for a Space Patrol spaceophone set now. This offer soon ends. The spaceophone, the magic phone that sounds like a walkie-talkie. But time's a wasting, so hurry. Now think of it. A spaceophone that looks exactly like the one Buzz Corey uses. But remember, this offer will soon end. Time is really running out. So, gang, hurry. Hurry while there's still time. Send today for your spaceophone set. You can talk on it to someone a straight 50 feet away. But don't wait. Act now. This offer soon ends. You get two blue and yellow plastic spaceophones, 50 feet of communication cord, and a briefing sheet. Here's all you do. Just buy a box of Instant Ralston. Then with your name and address, send an Instant Ralston box top and 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in continental U.S. and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> And now for a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story. Buzz and Happy are climbing the face of a steep cliff on the planet Saturn in pursuit of a criminal. At one side of them, a great waterfall thunders down 1,000 feet to the valley below. Colgar must have reached the top, Commander. I don't see him. It's amazing. He went up this cliff like a mountain goat. It's sure hard to get a foothold. Look out, Happy. There's a rock falling. Smoke and rockets. Oh, that was close. There are more coming. Press close to the side of the cliff. Hey, it looks like the whole top of the mountain is coming down on us. That's Colgar's work. He started a landslide. And it's coming down right on top of us. What are we going to do? Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Giant Bubble, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! <laughs> This is your commander, gang, with a story about the warriors in your bloodstream. Do you know what they are? They're the white blood cells, and they're warriors against disease. When a person is sick, he often needs a whole extra army of these warriors. That's just one reason why it's vital to have a big supply of blood in hospitals. Will you help me remind grown-ups that America needs more blood donations? Then join the Space Patrol Blood Boosters. Now don't wait. Join today. <laughs> Space Patrol and original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. <laughs> Other players were Nina Berra, Virginia Hewitt, and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufel speaking. <laughs> now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol! <laughs> And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station.